Grace and peace and mercy be unto you from God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. We welcome you to St. Luke AME Church as we celebrate on this first Sunday in the month of May on the very first day of the month. And as we celebrate in divine worship on this day, we honor the Lord our God with the fruit of our lips, with the praise of our hands, and with the celebration of our entire being in divine worship. We encourage you as you are worshiping with us, if this is your first time, to share in the chat line your name and your telephone number, that as people of God, we may share with you the wonderful blessing God is doing in and with the St. Luke AME Church. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us lift our hands in praise. Let us lift our voice in adoration. Let us lift our spirits in truth and honor unto the Lord God who made all and is in all and is through all. Let us celebrate on this third Sunday of Easter together. This is our call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy course is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the, the Lord is his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, all. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sings praises. Amen. This is our call to worship.
Where is a Christian's vital breath, a Christian's native air, a Christian's watchword at the gates of death, a Christian's enter into heaven with prayer? Let us pray. Wonderful and mighty and gracious God, we bless you. We glorify you. We honor your holy and divine name. We praise you from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. For you have been good to us, kind to us, merciful unto us. And in this season, God, we want to thank you for all your many blessings. God, we now ask humbly that you would forgive us of our sins, our transgressions, our misdeeds, those things we've done by plan or not by planning, those things we've done to injure people directly or unintentionally injuring others. Forgive us, God, and station our sins in the sea of forgetfulness and remember them no more. And God, on this first Sunday, we come in remembrance of him, him who is our Savior, him who is our Lord, him who is our Christ. By his stripes we are healed, and his blood atones for us. We've come this day to God to ask that you would help those who stand in the need of help, those members who are sick on their beds of affliction. We ask that you provide your presence and your healing for them. We pray, God, for those who have lost loved ones, that they will know the comfort of your salvation and they will know the peace of your presence this day. And God, we ask in our country, as we prepare to make some decisions, that the elections will be done in decent and order. We pray, God, that in the Middle East and in the eastern part of Europe, you will provide peace, wholeness, and calmness in your name. And now, God, we ask here at St. Luke that this worship service might be for the blessings of many, the encouragement of all, and the comfort of the persons who stand in the need of comfort. All these blessings we ask in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, unto your glory, O God, we pray. Amen. Good morning. We're thankful for you being with us again on the first Monday in a new month, the month of May 2022. This morning's scripture will be read from John chapter 21, verses 1 through 19 from the New King James Bible. And it reads, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the end of Tiberias. And on the wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, 
I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it in for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but it were two hundred cubits. Dragged the net with fishes, as they then, as soon as they had came to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which they have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and took bread and gave it them, and fish likewise. This was now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that he was risen from the dead. So when he had dined, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, Loveth thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. The word of God to the people of God. Praise be unto Almighty God.
Taste and see that the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth to all generations. O oh, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And on this first Sunday, we want to invite you to hear the word of the Lord, for there is a word from God as found in the book of John, chapter 21 verse 17. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he answered him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. And for our subject this morning, I'd like to talk from forgiving faults, forgiving faults. Let us pray. Dear God, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Let your word come before, before us and let your people hear it and let your people ingest it and let them do it in jesus name we pray amen forgiving faults humankind is fraught with shortcomings fraught with failures fraught with flaws fraught with faults. Humankind has so much in us that leads us not to be what we ought to be, but to be what we are. We often live below what our dignity calls us to be. The nobleness that is in us does not come out. Yet that which is vile and immature seems to rise every day and come out. We are challenged by our very vain nature to keep us sequestered in the basement of life, while if we allow the very blessings of God to come through us, then that which is vain in us will be banished, and that which is holy and righteous in us will be lifted up for the glory of the kingdom. When we humble ourselves, we rise. But when we exalt ourselves, we fall. It is in that garden experience that humankind begins its journey toward the place where we are now and the hope of forgiveness. It is in that garden experience where 
our forefathers and foremothers broke their relationship with God and left it that way until Jesus came with a new hope and a new opportunity. An English poet, Alec Alexander Pope, once wrote in his, uh, in his poem a, an essay on criticism to err is human to forgive divine. It is in our very DNA, our very nature to make faults to break relationship, not to do that which is correct. When we would do, Paul says, when I would do right, evil is always present. And the good I de desire to do, I do not do. We are caught by the baseness of our lives and not by the bestness. We are caught in the midst of our sinfulness and not are able not we're not able to cast down those things that would weigh us down the weights that would so easily beset us we cannot get rid of they seem to hang around us and hang on us when the text opens up the disciples have decided that they are going back to galilee and when they get back to Galilee, Peter, who has been selected perhaps, or chosen perhaps to be the leader, makes a bold decision that he's going to go fishing. And in the process of a fishing journey on the Galilean Sea, he fished all night long with his brothers. They fished all night long and caught nothing. In the morning, there appeared someone to them on the beach and asked them, have they caught anything? And they said, no. And the person says, cast your net on the other side. And when they cast their net on the other side, they caught 153 fish. They caught a load so heavy that the nets began to break. And John, the beloved disciple, said, it is the Lord. Peter, in a moment of of, of in, in punctuation, Peter, in a moment of being rash, jumped out of the boat, put his clothes on, and ran onto the beach because he knew it was Jesus. Once they got on the beach, Jesus said, let's have breakfast. Now, what is really, what's really interesting is he had already cooked some fish, but they then cooked the fish that they caught, and they had breakfast. And when he broke bread with them, they knew really it was him. They had heard his voice while on the on the sea. But when he broke the bread, like on the Emmaus road, when they got in and sat down and he broke bread and he gave thanks, they knew it was him by his way of doing it. And so Peter, in the midst of all of this, in the midst of his own sense of failings, now comes face to face with Jesus. And Jesus asked him a proverbial question. Peter, do you love me more than these? And he says, yes, Lord, I love you more than these. And he responds to him, feed my sheep. Feed, uh, you respond, yeah, feed my sheep. Peter is given an opportunity to move beyond the injury. And that is the first step of forgiveness, to move beyond the injury. Move beyond the thing that, that causes a problem. Move beyond that slap. Move beyond that slight. Move beyond that indignation. Move beyond that which would hurt to, to, to be able to affect forgiveness. The trouble with many of most of us is that we have a hard time moving beyond 
our hurt and our pain. We remember it year after year. We kind of like what is in Exodus chapter 21 verses uh, 24 and 25, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We want to exercise that law of revenge or the law of retaliation or what is in Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 21. It has a similar text and we are committed to that, forgetting that the Bible says vengeance is the Lord and the Lord will repay. We must all be ready always to have mercy and forgive. But to move beyond that, you have to hear the fact that God is willing to trust you and me, even though we have failed God or we have faults. God is willing to give us another chance for service. And so he says to Peter, feed my sheep. He didn't say, Peter, these are your sheep. These are your lambs. But rather, he says, feed my sheep. You take care of them. You serve them. You honor them. You, take, you protect them. You defend them. Feed my sheep. These are my sheep. You feed them. Peter then becomes committed to feeding the sheep because he's able now to look beyond the injury as God has looked beyond the injury that Peter has given unto him. He's able to look beyond the fact that Peter and call Peter to service even after his betrayal on Monday, Thursday, when he denied him three times. He's able to look beyond him even though Peter had rebuked him about saying he would die and he called him a devil. He says, get thee behind me, say. He's able to look beyond the fact when he tells Peter, Peter, when you are converted, strengthen your brothers. In other words, there's going to come a time when you'll be called into service. Even though you have failed, you have, have flaw, flaws and you have faults. You will be forgiven of your faults and forgiven of your, your failings and forgiven of your transgressions when you will accept the opportunity to serve and to serve the kingdom. So he says, feed my sheep. And he says to Peter a second time, Peter, do you love me more than these? He says, oh, yes, Lord. And he says, tend my sheep. One must then learn how to transform the opportunity God gives you into service, even though you may not know how to do it, or you may have been inadequate on many other occasions. First Peter chapter 5 reminds us that the Lord would give us oversight, some of us oversight over his sheep. Give us oversight over the flock and we are to tend them, not by being under compulsion, but we are to tend them with gentleness and willingness, not for sorting or sordid gain, filthy lucre, as it says in the King James, but earnestly. Not to lord our authority or power over them, but to be gentle and kind and serve them. It is this opportunity to serve that we need to seek and to seize our opportunity and we need to see it as we transform ourselves from broken into vessels of help, from fragile into vessels of power, not power of ourselves, but power of God. Paul puts it this way. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that we might know that the excellency of the power is of God and not of ourselves. In other words, in our humility, in our humbleness before God, God will then raise up in us a service that all humanity 
will be able to use and to honor. If you can't be a tree on the top of a hill, be a little scrub in the, in the real, but be the best scrub that there ever was. If you can't do this, do that, but do whatever you can do to the glory of God. Therefore, take the opportunity to transform your chance, your privilege to be a servant of the living God and God's people. And then thirdly, he asked Peter again, do you love me more than these? Peter now is really hurt because what comes to his mind is that he has denied Jesus three times. He has said, no, I don't know this man. He's even cursed. I don't know this man. And now he is caught and he, he, he feels the pain of and the guilt of his injury and of his sin and of his shortcomings and his flaws and his transgressions. But Jesus says to him, after Peter tells him, you know everything, but he says to him now, feed my sheep. In other words, take this opportunity to be in service. Take this opportunity to experience the forgiveness of God by sharing what God has given you with others. Oh, what a great privilege we have. What a wonderful opportunity we have in this post-resurrection time, to be in service to others, to give what we have. We may not have a billion dollars, but we may have a smile to give. We may not have a house made of gold, but we have a little hut or a hovel to share. We ought to give what we can so that even when we come to the end of time, God will know that we have done the very best that we can do. When Jesus broke the bread, they knew it was him. And so on this Sunday morning, as we come to share the broken bread, as we come to drink the spilled blood, on this Sunday morning, as we come to remember what he's done for us, that in the midst of what happened on Calvary, we are and we can be forgiven of our transgressions and our faults and our flaws. We are and can be forgiven and given another opportunity to serve as instruments of God's grace and God's peace among God's people. We are and can have another opportunity to share with the dying world that Jesus gave it all for you and I. And so when we break the bread, we experience anew the stripes on his body. When we break the bread, we experience anew them whipped him all night long. When we drink the wine, we experience anew the blood that came down from 72 pricks on his head. When we drink the blood, we experience anew the fact that his hands were pierced by nails and his feet too. We experience anew the fact that a sword or a spear went into his side and he was wounded for our transgressions. We experience anew that the blood of the Lamb can take away the sins and the faults of all of us. And so on this day, if we don't feel it, on this day, if we never sensed it, on this day, we may never experienced it, I invite you to open up your mind, your heart, and your spirit to the living God, to know that you and I have been forgiven. And because we were, were forgiven, he went to Calvary and died on an old rugged cross. He would not come down from the cross just to save himself. But he decided to stay there to save you and I. He opened up the gates of heaven 
to us. He opened up the opportunity for us to pray for ourselves. He opened up the opportunity for us to declare. And so on this Sunday morning, as we receive the, wet, the bread and the wine, as we receive the symbols of his body and blood, we receive also the forgiveness of Christ. Because as we forgive others, he will forgive us. And so let us have a forgiving heart, a forgiving mind, a forgiving spirit, a forgiving hope, a forgiving mission, a forgiving determination, a forgiving peace. Let us forgive our neighbors. Let us forgive others. Let us share the, the blessing of forgiveness because in the forgiveness of others, we receive the blessings of God. And God will, God not might, God will, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. I will forgive their very sins, their very faults, their very transgressions, all because they have the boldness to not only forgive others, but to ask for forgiveness of their sins. In his name we pray. Amen. If the anointing of the Lord has fallen fresh on you today and your heart has been convicted and your mind has been convinced and your soul has been converted, we invite you to give your life to Christ today by making a profession of faith, by declaring to the world, for Jesus I live and for Jesus I will die. If you once were saved and you no longer walk in the light of your salvation, we invite you to come and rededicate your life to Christ, to renew your relationship with God. Or if you're looking for a church home, a place where you can join with the band of believers as we work for the reconciliation of humanity unto God and the unity of all people together for the goodness and the grace that God gives us. We invite you to put your name and your telephone number in the chat line and someone from St. Luke will call you and lead you through the steps of salvation. Someone from St. Luke will call you and help you be reconnected and recommitted to God. And someone from St. Luke will call you and enlist you in the ministries and the work at St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church. It's your time to unite with God while God is near and God is present in our midst to give your life to Christ, to rededicate your life to Christ, or to join a church called St. Luke. Won't you do so today while it is still yet time and God is near and present unto us? We invite you now to share your gifts with the Lord on this first day of the week to honor God with the fruit of your labors, to honor God with your fruit of your stewardship, to honor God with the fruit of your presence. We invite you to give to the Lord in three different ways here at St. Luke. By Givelify, you may go to the Givelify app in your favorite app store and download it, or you may click on the link in the bulletin that you receive, and you may give through Givelify the fruit of your blessings. You may give to God by the fruit of your blessings through Cash App by using our Cash App ID, which is dollar sign, S-L-A-M-E-C Sowers, dollar sign, S-L-A-M-E-C Sowers, 
and you may share the fruit of your gift in that way. Or you may share the fruit of your gift by mailing your gift to St. Luke AME Church, 521 West Avenue E, Garland, Texas, 75040. St. Luke AME Church, 521 West Avenue E, Garland, Texas, 75040. We invite you on this first day of the week to share your gift with God and to honor God with the fruit of your labors. Let us now prepare to receive the Lord's Supper, uh, the Holy Communion. We invite you to get your elements, and while you're getting your elements, we will prepare our hearts, our minds, and souls to do this in remembrance of him, as he did on that Thursday night, as he instituted the Lord's Supper, or the Holy Communion. Ye did truly and earnestly repent of your sins. And in love and charity with your neighbor, and intend a new life, follow the commandments of God, walking henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament unto your comfort by humbly committing your hearts and souls unto God Almighty. Let us now pray together the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things, judge of all people. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time from time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking wrath and indignation against us, and we urge repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant we may have to serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Prayer of Consecration Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby oblation of himself, once offered of full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And the institute and its holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. He is coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech thee, and rather we receive in these creatures of bread and wine according to our Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Holy Institute, in remembrance of his death and passion, which take us from his most blessed body and blood. When the same night, he was betrayed by Judas with a kiss, denied by Peter by the fire, deserted by the other ten. He took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to him, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood 
of the New Testament. Not the blood of a bullock. Not the blood of a turtle dove. Not the blood of a lamb. But the blood of the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Drink ye all of this, which is shed for you and for many, for the remissions of sin. Do it often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Now, my brothers and sisters, let us together take the bread, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken for us on Calvary's cruel tree. Let us feast on that. Let us take the cup, symbolizing the blood of Jesus that was spilt on Calvary's cruel tree. Blood that streamed down from 72 pricks around his crown of his head. Blood that streamed down from his wounded sides. Blood that streamed down from his hands and feet. For you and me, let us drink. And now have we renewed our covenant with Almighty God. Let us pray together as the Lord taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the God of peace, that brought again from the dead, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in every good thing and working that which is well-pleasing within his sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom be glory and dominion and honor henceforth and forevermore.